Today on our 2007 Chevrolet Express van, we're going to be installing the Takancha Prodigy P2 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90885. Now because this vehicle did not come from the factory with a tow package, we're going to also be installing the Universal Installation Kit for a Trailer Brake Controller, part number ETBC7. Now we have power onto our brake controller. We'll go ahead and slide the manual override, which is the lever on the bottom. You'll see when we do that, it says NC for not connected. That means we do not currently have a trailer connected. We'll go ahead and plug one in real quick. And then you can see here with our trailer connected, when you push the manual override, you'll get a number. This button over here, or roller over here, is what adjusts the maximum output to the trailer brakes. As well as this button up here on the top right is your boost feature or how aggressive the brake controller applies power to your trailer brakes. Now we're going to begin here at the rear of the vehicle where we'll need to open up both of the rear doors. Now this vehicle already has a four flat wiring installed on it. But we're going to need to get this four flat wiring down underneath the vehicle towards the center of the hitch. We'll need to remove two interior panels here in order to get our four flat wiring pulled out to underneath the vehicle. Now to remove these panels, you can either use a trim panel removal tool or you can use just a large flathead screwdriver. We'll go ahead and slide the trim panel removal tool behind the panel or we'll release the tabs. Go ahead and set this panel aside for now. We'll then need to repeat the same process on this lower panel. Next we're going to need to go ahead, we're going to need to get this four flat wiring pulled down through here and come out the bottom. Now we'll need to go on the underside and remove a panel so that we can feed the wiring through. Now this right here is the cover that we're going to need to remove. Go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver and then we'll pry the panel out. You'll notice that there is one little tab right here. It will slide out, it comes out right there. Next we're going to take an old section of airline tubing that we're going to use as a pull wire to feed up so we can pull our wires down. So we'll go ahead and pull our pull wire out or we'll tape our four flat to it so we can pull it back down into position. Once we have our four flat pulled down, we'll remove the pull wire. We'll then need to go ahead and put our panel back in place. And we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of electrical tape and we're going to wrap our wire with it just to give it a little bit of protection as it goes up and over the frame. Next we're going to go ahead and take our four flat wiring, feed it up over the frame so that we get it in this area right here. Next we're going to need to choose a location to mount our bracket that holds the four and seven way plug. Go ahead and put the bracket temporarily over the plug and we'll kind of line it up here on our bumper and see where we're going to need to drill a couple holes. We'll then go ahead and take a paint marker, mark our two locations. We'll then take our drill and drill both holes. Next we'll take the hardware that comes with the kit and we'll attach our bracket to the bumper. We'll slide our bolt up through, put our flat washer on, we'll install a star washer or the lock washer, followed by the hex nut. Do that for the other location. Go ahead and tighten it down.
Next we'll go ahead and install our seven and four way plug into the bracket. Go ahead and attach it using the supplied hardware. And then go ahead and tighten it down. Next we'll go ahead and connect the two four flat connectors together. Before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of dielectric grease, which is part number 11755, to help protect the connector. And then go ahead and put the connector together. Once the connector's together, we'll go ahead and take a zip tie, feed it through both sides, and secure it to itself that way we make sure the connection stays nice and tight. Trim off any excess zip tie. Next we're going to go ahead and take the gray duplex wire that comes in the kit. We'll take our razor knife. We'll need to split back a little bit of the gray covering here on this one end. Exposing the black and white wire. We'll then need to strip a little bit of wire back from each of these two. the wire stripped back, we'll be connecting the black wire with the black wire on the plug and the blue wire with the white wire. So it'll look like that. Go ahead and put the black wire back in and crimp it down. Do the same thing for the white wire to the blue wire. Now the blue wire is what gives the brake signal from the brake controller at the seven way plug. And the black wire is the 12 volt hot lead going to the seven way plug. Both of these wires will be routed up to the front of the vehicle. Now that we have our connection made, we can go ahead and tape them up to help protect them from the elements. Now we have two wires left coming off the plug. We have a purple wire, and this is for a backup lockout switch or the backup reverse lights. We're not gonna be hooking that one up on this installation today, so we're just gonna tape it back off for now. We also have a white wire here with a ring terminal on it. This is a ground wire. We're gonna need to take a self-tapping screw and ground it somewhere on the frame. Go ahead and tape up our purple wire first. Next we're going to go ahead and add a piece of the wire loom that comes with the kit here to the wires coming off of the seven way plug. Go ahead and trim it down. We'll then feed it onto the wires here. Go ahead and put a couple zip ties on it to keep it in place. Now before we secure up any loose wiring, we're gonna go ahead and take our gray duplex wire and begin routing it towards the front of the vehicle so we can see how much extra wiring we'll need to zip tie up out of the way. So now with our gray duplex wire pulled up out of the way, we can go ahead and use a couple zip ties to secure up the excess wiring here. Now with our wiring secure, we can go ahead and trim off any excess zip tie. Next we're gonna go ahead and again take our piece of airline tubing that we're gonna use as a pull wire and tape it off here to the gray duplex wire. We'll then need to route our gray duplex wire up to the front of the vehicle 
Now when routing this wire, you want to make sure you stay away from areas that have moving parts, may become hot, or have sharp edges, as all of these can easily damage the wire. Next we're going to take our pull wire and feed it down from the top side of the engine compartment down underneath the vehicle. Now we'll go ahead and tape the duplex wire to the pull wire. We'll go back up to the top side and pull it up into position. Next we're going to go ahead and use a zip tie to help secure our duplex wire and keep it pulled up tight. Next we're going to need to strip back the gray covering from the duplex wire from where we zip tie it off to secure it up to the end of our wire. We'll just do that by taking our razor knife and splitting open the gray covering. Next we'll go ahead and take our black wire here. We'll go ahead and route this across the engine bay. We need to route it over towards the passenger side inner fender well near the battery. Now you'll need about 10 extra feet of the single 10 gauge wire, which is part number 10-1-1. So we've gone ahead and got approximately 10 extra feet of wire. We're gonna need to start up here and route it over again near the battery, which is over on the passenger side. So we'll follow along where the other black wire ran over to. Next we're gonna need to mount our two circuit breakers, we're going to be mounting a 40 amp circuit breaker that will be tied in with a black wire that ran from the back of the vehicle. And the other one we're going to mount is a 30 amp circuit breaker and this will tie in with the other black wire that we just ran across over to here and that will go to the power for the brake controller. We'll be using a couple self tapping screws on each to attach it to the inner fender well here. Now we'll go ahead and take our wire. This is our black wire that's run up from the back for the 12 volt power supply. Go ahead and trim that one to length. Strip a little wire back. We'll then be adding one of these smaller ring terminals to it. And we'll be connecting that to the chrome side or the silver side of the 40 amp breaker. We'll then take the other black wire that will go in and power the brake controller. Go ahead and add a small ring terminal to this wire as well. And this wire will connect to the silver or the chrome side of the 30 amp breaker. Next we're going to need to make two jumpers that will go from the copper side of each of the circuit breakers down to the positive side of the battery. Go ahead and add a small ring terminal to the one end. On the other end we'll add a large ring terminal
go ahead and make up our second jumper to go from the breaker over to the battery. Go ahead and add that in as well. Can then go ahead and take our socket and tighten all of them down. We'll then use a couple zip ties to help secure our wires. Go ahead and trim off any excess zip tie. Next we're gonna put a small cut in the grommet here where all the factory wires go through. That way we can pull our two wires in. We're going to go ahead and take our pull wire again, push it through the grommet and the slit that we made. Now we've got our pull wire pulled up here in a position. We'll go ahead and tape our black and white wire to it to where we can pull it in through the grommet. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take our brake controller. We're gonna go ahead and mount our brake controller using the plastic pocket that comes with the kit. So it goes in there like that. Go ahead and choose a location here where we can mount our plastic pocket. Somewhere right in there works pretty good. Now you wanna make sure that you check behind the dash first so that there's nothing that could be drilled into that could be damaged. We're good. Go ahead and slide the brake controller back out We'll then use the screws that come with the kit to attach our pocket to the lower part of the dash. Next, we're gonna take the plug that comes with the brake controller. We're gonna connect the blue wire to the white wire that we just ran through the firewall. Add a butt connector to join the two together. Then we're going to take the black wire that's part of the plug and connect it to the black wire that we just ran through the firewall. This black wire is the power wire for the brake controller. The blue wire is the wire that sends signal back to the seven-way plug that sends signal to the trailer brakes. Now we have two wires left. The red wire will tie in with the brake light switch signal wire, and the white wire is the ground wire. Now, if we remove this panel right here, there's a couple grounds underneath here that we can tie in with. To remove this panel, just simply take your flathead screwdriver or a trim panel removal tool, slide it in underneath and pop them loose. So right there is the ground that we'll be tying in our white wire to. Now this white wire is just a little bit short to make it over to our ground. So we're going to take an extra piece of the white wire that we had from our kit. We're going to strip a little back and connect it and add a little bit of wire to the white wire off the brake controller plug. Go ahead and trim our wire to length. Strip a little bit of wire back. Then add another ring terminal to it. Now before we make this connection, to make things easier, we're gonna go ahead and tape up our three butt connectors at this time. Ahead and add our ground wire in line here. Take the screw out, put it through our ring terminal, and put the screw back in.
and go ahead and put our panel back in place. Next we'll need to find the brake switch which is right here. We'll follow the wires around. We went ahead and pulled back some of the electrical tape and then we're going to need to use our test light and figure out which wire is hot only when the brake pedal is pressed. As you can see here it's this white wire in the bundle. So the white wire is what we'll be tying the red wire from the brake controller to. We'll do that using a quick splice connector. We'll slide it over the white wire. We'll then take the red wire and slide it into the other slot. We'll then take a pair of pliers and crimp it down. Once our wires have been crimped down, we can go ahead and take the cover and fold it over so that it snaps into position. Now we'll take a little bit of electrical tape to make sure our connection stays. Next we'll go ahead and take our plug, feed it up in through the plastic pocket. You'll notice there's a tab with a locking piece here. You want to make sure that those line up. Click together like that. Then take the brake controller, slide it back down into position so that it locks into place in the holder. We can then go ahead and secure any excess loose wiring underneath the dash using a couple zip ties. Now we can go ahead and trim off any excess zip tie. Now because this is a side post battery, we're going to need to use this side post battery extender. It's part number DW05416. So we'll need to remove the positive side bolt completely and then we'll install this in place of it. Now we're ready to reconnect the battery. Now with our positive side back connected, we can go ahead and add both of our ring terminals in. Go ahead and tighten down our ring terminals to our battery post extension. Now you'll need to reinstall any of the interior panels here at the rear of the vehicle that you may have removed during the installation. And that'll do it for our installation of the Takancha Prodigy P2 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90885, in conjunction with the Universal Installation Kit for Trailer Brake Controllers, part number ETBC7, on our 2007 Chevrolet Express Van.